Hey everybody, what's up? It's Nick here. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that was left on one of my older videos. This was a question that came from the video that I made about importing AVC HD files off of a camera and putting them directly into iMovie so you can work with them right away. This comment says, I have a Panasonic 1080p camera that has video on the card shot in AVC HD. I didn't know to use the MP4 format instead for iMovie. So my iMovie is not seeing the videos on the card. Yes, I imported from the camera and nothing shows. Yes, I also tried to change the settings within iMovie to AVC HD, and they won't show up anywhere. I can only watch the videos on the camera screen. Help. So, thank you a lot for your question, uh, Mr. Hodgkin Fifth. Um, I don't know if I said that right. So, I'm going to show you basically how to work around with this problem because I've had this problem myself. So what's happened was right before I was actually recording that tutorial, I had a bunch of videos on the card and they wouldn't recognize within iMovie for some reason. And I, it took me a while to figure it out, but basically I'm gonna walk you through with some different steps that you can use to troubleshoot it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you right here, I have the SD card from my Panasonic camera. That's everything was shot in AVC HD. And the first thing you're gonna to need to know is where exactly to find the AVC HD files. So go to your camera's SD card and then go, to, you'll see these two folders right here. Go to the private folder, AVC HD, BDMV, and then stream. These two are two AVC HD files that I shot earlier today. And if I just open them up in VLC, uh, they open up right here. As you can see, that was just a crappy picture of my microphone. And this is going to be some video of my dog. So yeah, so you, so you can see those are the two video files and they're just two random video files that I use. So the most important thing you need to know is to find where these files are. So if you absolutely cannot import them into iMovie with the methods that I showed before, make sure you know where you can find these files. And if you can't play these files right away, that's because QuickTime Player built into Mac OS X cannot understand these .mts files. So in order to preview them first, you'll have to download a separate video player such as VLC right down here. So make sure you know the location of those files. And if for some reason you can't use the import from camera method from right here, then you, it'll be really important to figure out where those files are. But as you can see here, these are the only two files that I have on the camera. So if I go to that import from camera window, why do I have all of these files right here? Well, as you can see, I have these files that were shot earlier on the camera and I previously deleted them from this folder. But as you can see, I can't click on them and I can't play them, but I can click and play these two. So that's kind of strange for me. And the reason for that is because whenever you record an MTS file or a video shot in AVC HD, it'll actually record two separate files. It'll record the video file itself, which will be a .mts, and then it'll also record some different data files that'll still be stored on your SD card if you delete these. So if I go back to the previous folder, this is the BDMV folder, we went to stream to find our video files, but if we go to this clip in folder, as you can see, we have these CPI files. And these are actually data files that record specific data that goes along with the MTS files. And if you delete the MTS files, the CPI files for the previous videos will still be there. So if we go here, and we go to import from camera, even though these are the only two video files that are still on the SD card, these are still the CPI files that are remaining from the previous clips that I have since deleted. So in order to solve this problem and make it so that you can import directly from the camera using the same method before, what I normally do after I import Whatever I do after I import every single clip that I have, whenever I'm pretty sure that everything is available on my hard drive, I just delete all of these directories right here and that deletes any unnecessary files so that the next time I go and record something, it'll be ready to use within the iMovie method. So that won't exactly help you in the situation that you're in right now. So. For example, this guy who commented has a bunch of clips that he can only view on his camera and he wants to import them into iMovie. So once again, make sure you find the location of them on your hard drive or on the SD card, sorry. 
So all we want are these MTS files. So you can click and drag these MTS files to anywhere that you'd like to save them. I'm just gonna drag these to my desktop for now. And we wanna convert these MTS files to QuickTime movies. So we're gonna do that using an application called Handbrake, which I will link in the video's description as well. And so if we open Handbrake, it'll prompt us to choose the destination. So I'm just gonna select these two files or select this one file. And then as you can see here, it scans the one file. You can choose to keep the name as it is, and you can choose the destination. So as you can see here, we can choose to export it to an MP4 or an MKV. We don't wanna worry about the MKV. We just wanna use the MP4. You can choose to mess with all of these settings down here, but I'm not going to. And then I'm just gonna click start, and then it will start encoding. And what that'll do is that will transcode the MTS file to a QuickTime video that you can actually use in iMovie. So it also gives us this little message that says, put down the cocktail, your hand like your handbrake cue is done. So if I close out of that, if you guys remember this MTS file was the video of my microphone. If I open that up, as you can see, it's now an MP4 and it's opened up in I er, QuickTime, my bad. And there it is, it's a working video file, and you can use that in your iMovie projects. And you wanna do just the same thing for every other video clip that you have on your SD card. And once you're done with that, once you have everything imported onto your computer, and you have everything converted to MP4 files, then what you wanna do is go to your camera's SD card. And what I normally like to do is, this is the main directory for the SD card. And what I normally like to do is just delete everything off of it, so that that way when I put it into the camera, the camera will record nothing but new files onto the SD card so that that way there's no confusion and corruption between the MTS files and the CPI files. So it's a bit confusing and admittedly it's a gigantic pain in the ass because the AVC HD file is just terrible to work with. I absolutely hate working with AVC HD but the downside to that is some really good cheap cameras that record really good quality and are really cheap you know they're good for a budget they all record to ABC HD. So it's kind of just a sacrifice that you need to make if you want to work with these cheaper cameras. But anyway, I hope that answered your question, Mr. Hodgen the fifth or whatever. <laughs> so all you need to do is find the MTS files on your SD card and then use Handbrake to convert them to MP4 files. So Handbrake is absolutely free. I'll give it as a link in the video's description. You don't have to pay anything you don't have to pay anything for it. It's completely open source. And yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this answered your question. Thank you a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.